California dreaming. What utterly deluded dream involves California? Seriously. So, uh, long-time viewers or listeners, uh, rather, since it's primarily a podcast, you may remember a video I did a couple years back uh, called The South Africa Problem, where I described in detail uh, why South Africa is a uh, an issue. I'll have a link to that video down below, uh, along with uh, one other one that I'll mention later. But uh, go watch that afterwards, it's important. South Africa isn't the only one. California. You, you guys, are also a serious problem. California is a problem. It was kind of set to inevitably become a problem eventually, even from the beginning, uh, the way certain things were set up. However, uh, then the way some things just ended up going in more recent history kind of just made it worse. And uh, then also modern climate conditions have uh, made those circumstances even worse. And uh, California's particular location tectonically adds uh, additional critical uh, semi-global functionality risk in some aspects, not not like at a basic level, but uh, at a more technological level. Starting off uh, with the most pressing immediate thing, uh, the one that I most recently brought up and consistently bring up in uh, my water supply issue videos, the most recent one of which was uh, the worsening water situation in the Southwest. I'll have a link to that also. But California is uh, water doomed, sort of, at least. California needs a lot of water because uh, there are way too many people crammed into that state, uh, somewhere around 40 million. It uh, thankfully didn't tip over 40 million, as was initially expected, because over the past uh, year or two, people in California apparently finally started uh, getting the message from reality that uh, you need to get out of California. And so uh, people did actually start leaving in large numbers, and California's state population has actually begun to decrease. But regardless, uh, it's still close to 40 million, and uh, that's way too many people. California does not have enough water, and also California needs water for more than just the people themselves. It needs water for several very critical industries, which are a bit too over-concentrated there. Uh, you can see all kinds of uh, uh, water charts and graphs of uh, just how uh, poor and low all kinds of various river flows in California are uh, compared to, you know, what they should be. And uh, they're well below those numbers. And so California's in for some issues. Uh, Los Angeles and a lot of Southern California kind of uh, gets to live in an illusion a little bit because they secretly, I'm going to call it stealing, uh, they steal water from the Colorado River, uh, pumping it several hundred miles across the desert over on their border with Arizona at the uh, southern end of one of the reservoirs on the border. And obviously the entire Southwest is in a severe drought issue, has been for some time, and is uh, getting worse and worse. So the whole uh, Colorado River network hasn't been really doing that well, and their own problems are getting worse because of California. Lake Mead, a uh, huge reservoir that uh, supplies Nevada's water and uh, a portion of Arizona's water, has to keep releasing so much extra water to flow downstream down the Colorado River to keep those border reservoirs on the Arizona border with California at uh, near full so that the pipelines to Southern California and Los Angeles can keep sucking water out of them. And then positions like Lake Powell further up the Colorado River from Lake Mead keep releasing a bunch of extra water from their reservoirs to make sure that Lake Mead doesn't drain down too fast because Lake Mead is draining down too fast from constantly uh, losing water in and of itself 
and releasing a bunch of extra water to flow down river to keep those border reservoirs full. And even within California, the uh, a similar situation is playing out for uh, all of those rivers that are used as uh, the water supply for various regions. Uh, they have reservoirs upriver, uh, usually further up in the mountains in California, and those reservoirs are now constantly releasing extra water to uh, try to make sure that the the amount of water flow uh, going down the river is enough to, you know, keep the supplies good for all the cities and everything. And, like I said, not just for the cities and the people, but also uh, for some critical industries and also agriculture. It does grow quite a bit of stuff, and uh, especially among uh, particular fruits and vegetables. A number of things are percentage-wise a little too over-concentrated in California. Now, in regards to the industry, the silicon wafer industry, the production of silicon wafers and uh, computer chips and processors, is globally a bit too over-concentrated. Uh, the overwhelming majority is in the U.S. and Taiwan. Uh, and in that semiconductor shortage video, I specifically talked about the issues with Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan has been having its own drought and water problems. However, as mentioned, uh, the other nation that has a huge majority of the uh, production of silicon wafers for of silicon wafers for chips and processors and everything is the U.S. And within the U.S., the absolute overwhelming majority of that is in California, which is a problem. As, uh, like I said, the over-concentration of uh, something critical in one specific area, that's an issue. And it's becoming more of an issue uh, for especially Taiwan, but eventually now California as well, because of the uh, water supply constraints. Taiwan actually has gotten so bad that uh, They've implemented uh, water usage restrictions across the nation. California hasn't gotten that bad yet. But the semiconductor production industry requires a lot of water. Like, really, really requires a lot of water. So this is inevitably uh, going to turn into a severe problem, like it has already turned into a severe problem uh, for the supply coming from Taiwan. Also, uh, posing a risk to that production, along with a uh, risk to a number of other things that we'll mention, is California's tectonic location and uh, tantrum-throwing tendencies. Basically, yeah, a, a lot of uh, the modern stuff that's been built, it can, it can take the repeated, we'll call them casual concerts, you know, the 6.0s, the 7.0s, uh, some stuff starts to fall apart still, but uh, you know, you know it's coming. California's gonna rock again. As in, not gently. And uh, when that occurs, it is gonna cause some damage and uh, thus some stalling of production of very critical things. Specifically, we're just talking about uh, silicon wafers and semiconductors and uh, all kinds of electronics, since so much of it is concentrated there. And apart from that also, but still in the electronics field, it is uh, potentially going to damage and uh, thus cut off a lot of communication and a, a lot of sites, a lot of networking, because so many Websites, groups, companies, everything have uh, their servers and everything overtly concentrated in California. And so uh, this was stupid. This was very, very, very stupid. Uh, I don't care what kind of economic incentives were offered. I get that, you know, each company was making an individual decision. It wasn't like some, it wasn't like some, you know, collective hive mind Still, ultimately, uh, there, there kind of should have been some barring uh, against, uh, against doing that because, that, again, that's, that's just stupid. Especially, you know, given now how much, uh, 
how much commerce and also even general communication is run via the internet and uh, so many sites. However, there might be some hope, like just a tiny bit, because it looks like a few uh, major companies, only a few of them, but it looks like a few, uh, actually because of the the overt allowance of violence uh, by the state and local governments of California uh, last year and their exorbitantly increasing tax rates, it looks like a few of the major companies are actually expressing intentions to relocate. Now ultimately, uh, whether that ends up being a hopeful outcome will depend on where they relocate to, because if they just relocate to a uh, you know, some other water-doomed location like Arizona, or if they go to, a, uh, you know, Florida, the hurricane beating stick that's ultimately going to sink under the rising sea anyways, that would not really, you know, be a win. But, uh, moving over to the one other primary thing is, uh, California's denial of resource access despite being an extremely excellent, uh, critically concentrated source of a number of things. Uh, primarily, the really big one, the most important one to mention, rare earth metals. With uh, nearly 90% of the world's supply currently uh, coming from China, however, that need not be the case. Because uh, behind China, the next in line major mega concentration area in the world of uh, rare earths is in the US. Unfortunately, it's in California. And California has uh, been undergoing over uh, recent times what I'm going to refer to as environmental activism psychosis, where they are. Uh, going anti-everything and banning everything. Nothing's gonna possibly meet uh, the, you know, environmental standards that are set. So there is a mine, or rather there sort of was a rare earth mine, you know, at, at the location uh, where the highest concentration is in California. But uh, it, it keeps, it, it gets shut down, then it gets allowed to start up again, then it gets shut down again. Then it, it, it's allowed to start up again, you know, for another couple months and then shut down again. So California's deep hatred of mining and uh, outright refusal is legitimately uh, condemning the entire world to near absolute dependency on China for rare earth metal supply. Oh, and how could I forget the wildfires? I actually can't believe that. On top of uh, the, you know, over-concentration thing and the water supplies and the inevitably upcoming uh, devastating earthquake or earthquakes, plural, there's also the uh, much more frequent, uh, basically yearly occurrence now of uh, total state burndown syndrome. And I know it hasn't uh, ever really gotten deep in uh, to uh, the, the larger inhabited areas yet and uh, not really, you know, caused like super damage. But, you know, if, if you keep getting repeats of uh, last year's spectacle of a fire season, how long can you really, really keep up that, uh, that shield for? But yeah, that's the grand overview and uh, summation of the California problem as it now stands. So for anyone who did stick around through the entire video, thank you for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, uh, check through all my other stuff. Thank you to everybody who ever has and everyone who still is supporting me. Uh, if you want to support me, PayPal and Patreon links are both down there as well. So may God bless and protect all of you, and I will see you all around next time.